Hey Michigan fans, welcome to the Wolverine 24-7 weekend wrap-up. I'm your host Zach Shaw and this show is designed to catch you up on all of the weekend's activities in the world of Michigan sports. To conduct a deeper dive, be sure to check out all of our stories at michigan.247sports.com. If you're new to the show, the show operates in a countdown format where we now will feature five numbers to know, four hot takes, one of which will be a bold prediction, top three GIFs of the week, two hail mail questions, and one weekend MVP. Your five numbers to know. 2,926, the number of days between Michigan's wins over a top 10 team. Michigan beat Wisconsin on Saturday 14 to seven if you missed it, beating a top 10 team for the first time since September 27, 2008. That win was also over Wisconsin and is perhaps the only thing that binds Jim Harbaugh and Rich Rodriguez's careers at Michigan. Two, the number of teams currently in the AP Top 25 that Michigan has beaten. In addition to beating Wisconsin, fell from 8 to 11. Michigan also can claim a victory over now number 21, Colorado. The two wins are tied with Tennessee for the most wins over a Top 25 team this season. 35 colon 41, Michigan's time of possession on Saturday. It was its highest time of possession of the season and was in stark contrast to Wisconsin, which is averaging over 34 minutes of possession. Four, the number of missed field goals Kenny Allen has this season. That's also the number of missed field goals he had in 13 games last season. Allen missed two field goals on Saturday before Ryan Tice went on to miss the third, leaving nine points directly off the board. 32, the number of saves Michigan's three goaltenders combined for in Sunday's exhibition win over Windsor. Yes, that's right. Michigan hockey is coming to the Wolverine 24-7 team. Michigan.247sports.com for all of your hockey coverage. It's still a work in progress, but there is work and there is progress. You ready for some hot takes? No? Too bad. Number one, the defense that donned blue in the stadium behind me on Saturday is the best defense in the country. Whether it's its stifling run defense or its electric pass defense, Michigan can make every single team look uncomfortable on offense. Colorado is starting to look like one of the best offenses in the country, and even they struggle to do anything after the first quarter. Just look at what Michigan has done in its first two Big Ten games. Facing Wisconsin and Penn State, two teams many expected to make bowls this year, Michigan has held them to 17 total points and less than 400 yards of total offense. If a team scores 17 points and gets less than 400 yards of total offense in a game, that is usually seen as a mediocre offensive performance in college football. Just imagine if two teams combine to do it, in two consecutive weeks against their conference foe. That's how good Michigan's defense is, and if you think that there is another defense out there, come find me, show me the tapes, let's see. I think Michigan's got the best one in the country right now. Number two, special teams will be a storyline to watch the entire season. Yes, the special teams unit leads the nation in blocked and tipped kicks. They also have a couple touchdowns to their name. Jabril Peppers is always going to draw excitement, but that kicking game is in trouble. If you go 0 for 3 in field goals combined between two kickers, that is not something that you get over easily. There is not somebody on Michigan's bench that is just going to be lights out kicking at this point. If they did have such a player, they would be playing right now. Quinn Nordine is hurt. Ryan Tice is not that much of an upgrade over Kenny Allen. We've got a couple mailbag questions about this, so we'll get to those later. But for now, know this, that is a big problem, and any team that is in contention with Michigan will do everything in their power to exploit it. This next one is a little odd because Michigan's offensive line so far has actually done quite well, but it has allowed too many tackles for loss, and it is in danger of stalling the progress of Michigan's offense. Wisconsin got six tackles for loss and four sacks on Saturday, and that is too many. Wisconsin's defense is good, but Michigan's offensive line supposedly has three players who could make NFL rosters in the next couple of years via the NFL draft, and that is too many tackles for loss to allow. Not a good sign. They're facing a lot of less stout defenses moving forward, but remember, this is a team that's ranked number four in the country, so we elevate those expectations. It's also worth noting that Michigan offensive line is in the bottom half of the Big Ten in tackles for loss allowed. Again, being nitpicky here, but with Michigan, the expectation is that every unit will be in the top three in the conference. The last hot take is supposed to be a prediction. As we're trying to condense this video, my hot prediction is this. Jabril Peppers will have two touchdowns next week. He's facing Rutgers, hometown team, so to speak. He's starting to grow his presence on offense and in turn, growing his comfort level on offense. We saw him at Wildcat quarterback. We've seen him at slot receiver, at 
running back. My prediction is that they start handing him the ball a little bit more next week. He ends up walking away with at least two touchdowns. Now we go inside for the top three GIFs of the week. Number three, the Harbaugh hype train brought to life. We see the 11 deep I formation breaks down, ends up being just a simple run, but it's a nice confusing play that threw off Wisconsin and it actually threw off the team in practice. They said they had never heard of anything like it before. It was a Jay Harbaugh invention, and we see it worked against the Stout Badgers defense, and of course, and of course, just keeps every defense on their toes moving forward. Number two is a play that is so beautiful, I actually wrote an entire story about it. Play action, all go. They were looking for Jake Butt. You see Jake Butt in triple coverage there, but Darbo wasn't. Mara Darbo is in single coverage. Wilton Spate finds him. Longest play of the game, longest reception of Amara Darbo's career, and in a game that was 14-7, to those six points were pretty critical to Michigan winning the ball game. A general rule of thumb here with the top GIFs of the week is that if a play actually lands in the top 10 of SportsCenter's top 10 plays, heck, even in the top five, it's probably going to be in our top GIFs. That's the case here as Jordan Lewis, the reigning All-American, leaping and making the one-handed catch Jim Harbaugh said he'd only seen it one time before, and that's with Odell Beckham Jr.'s catches in the NFL. Jordan Lewis leaves at the 38, and as the player said, floated for about five yards and catches it around the 43-44 yard line. Makes an interception that was the dagger in the game and gave Michigan the victory that it so desperately needed. Now it's time for our Hail Mail Questions of the Week. If you want to ask a question in future videos, be sure to check out michigan.247sports.com slash board. I will post a thread asking for questions on a Sunday after the game. Feel free to ask away there. Our first question is a combo question, just because of how similar they were between Bounds and Michael Harden the second. They both are asking about the kicker. Yes, I talked about it during my hot takes. That is a problem area. Michigan has missed five field goals in the last three weeks. That is not a good look for a team that is trying to win a conference trying to maybe even win a national championship. And as for the candidates for the kicker position, Quinn Nordine is, quote, working through something, as Jim Harbaugh says, which of course can mean that he is out for two days or two years or anything in between. But my guess is that he will not be playing this season. So it is a battle between Kenny Allen, Ryan Tice, and the field. And I do think Kenny Allen is the man for the job. It's tough to say because he's done so poorly so far this season, but I don't think his season last year was a fluke. It's really, really hard to be a hyper-consistent kicker and then lose it all. They have about three weeks of either gimme games or bye weeks in which they're able to try to figure this out. My prediction is that Michigan will actually end up hiring someone involved in the kicking world as a kicking consultant to try to figure this out. My prediction is that Kenny Allen gets the job, but I would not be surprised if Ryan Tice also contended for it. Our second question comes from Ryan Peterman 27 who asks, who is starting in replace of Grant Newsom, JBB, Jawan bush Obidi, or Ben Bradison? Well, I just wrote a feature story about Ben Bradison, so my inclination is to say that he will eventually be the left tackle, but I was very surprised. bush Obidi has been a backup for a couple years now. He's got a little bit more experience, and I can't tell if that was a snap decision to put him in or if that was an indication of who the better player is. It's really tough, but personally, given that Ben Bradison was actually fighting for that job during fall camp, is that he is the more talented player, and as long as he can minimize his mistakes in practice, he will be the starting left tackle for the rest of the season. Sounds like Grant Newsom will need surgery and will be out for a long period of time. Now it's time for our final segment of the evening, our game MVP, and it's kind of tough because a lot of Saturday's best plays were that. They were just single plays that ended up changing the game. We saw all three of them in the top three GIFs of the week. My game MVP is going to go to Channing Stribling. Stribling was targeted all game. Wisconsin quarterback Alex Hornibrook wanted nothing to do with former All-American Jordan Lewis. And Stribling was up to the challenge. He got multiple pass breakups, excellent coverage on a lot of plays, and of course, the first multi-interception game that Michigan has had since 2013. Not one quarterback has looked comfortable playing Michigan so far this season. Some people thought Alex Hornibrook would become the exception. He completed just 9 of 25 passes. Pitiful game for him. Pitiful game for the Badgers pass game. And that's why Channing Stribling is our game MVP. Well, that's going to do it for the Wolverine 24-7 weekend wrap-up. Hope you had fun. It's a shorter video than usual, but if you need more content, you can always go check out our website at michigan.247sports.com. We've got stories coming up every day, every hour, almost as our site suggests, 
24-7. I'm Zach Shaw. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. Hope you enjoy the week ahead. Thanks for watching.